Welcome to Nobel Biz Webinars. In this series, we talk to industry leaders and learn insightful information that will help your contact center business. Hey everybody, thanks for joining today. Really excited about today's conversation. It's actually something that comes up quite often and really what we're going to focus on is inbound and the evolution of inbound coming into the world of Omnichannel. So I'm really excited about today's guest. It's Ryan Peters. Um, Ryan's had over a decade of experience in running contact centers, especially focusing on the inbound. So Ryan, uh, thanks so much for joining. Looking forward to our conversation on inbound. Yeah, ex extremely happy to be here today. You know, one of the things that I wanted everyone to kind of get an idea of before we jump into the topic is a little bit about your credibility on inbound, right? Understanding your work in contact centers. Can you give a little bit of background on what you've done, where you've been working, things like that? What's your history look like? Yeah, so, you know, I've had the opportunity throughout the years to literally start at the ground level as a rep and, um, you know, working <laughs> as a call center representative, taking calls on a customer service slash sales um, account and just grew from there to a place where, you know, I was traveling the world literally um, being sent everywhere, <laughs> wherever there were challenges that needed to be fixed or programs that need to be revised or client relationships that need to be rebuilt. Um, so I've really had that opportunity throughout multiple verticals from telecom to healthcare to travel, etc. So um, it's been a great opportunity for me over the last 12 years. Awesome. Well, with that being said, you know, considering you have a background in global contact centers, large companies, being able to deal with big and small, um, there's got to be a lot of things that really affect the productivity and effectiveness of being able to run that center. And especially on the inbound part, when we right. talk about that, since that's the largest share of all the traffic you see, I'd love to kind of just step back for a minute and talk a little bit about, you know, what is inbound you know when we talk about that walk us through for those yeah. that go like yeah we've seen we know what inbound is but for those who are just kind of getting an idea of what we're going to focus on today what do we mean when we're talking about someone having a center or a department that focuses on inbound and doing inbound campaigns yeah so inbound would be any call or transaction you know because nowadays we're multi-channel or omni-channel um, center so it's anything coming into the center into the company that originates from a customer from a member um, into that center. So when we talk about that and we're saying, okay, um, you know, there's inbound, what, what are common examples in your use cases where inbound calls would be created or inbound interactions? Do you have examples of what types of situations would cause someone to need to call inbound? It sounds obvious for a lot of people, but just to right. kind of clarify a little bit here, what is some stuff? Yeah. Around? Yeah. So, you know, it depends on the vertical, right? So if, if you're running a healthcare account, and you've got an inbound call coming in from a member, it could be a customer service call saying, hey, I wanted to check my insurance. Um, did we get this cleared? You know, and a lot of times on the inbound side, you have cost centers. So that's why it's so important to have this conversation today because a lot of companies, their inbound center is not a revenue generating center. It is a customer service, customer support. There's some challenge that is having them call in uh, and then you do have the other sales centers where, you know, they're calling in because they want to add a feature. Maybe it's it's Comcast or, or AT&T. Hey, I want to add a line or I want to add channels. Um, but for the most part, a lot of times it's that support cost center um, experience. So let's talk about the evolution of going from <laughs> telephone calls into the world of mul multiple channels and then now you know, more than ever, the omni-channel experience. Let's get a brief history of that. What did you see and have you seen through that transition? Yeah, so, you know, it, it's much different from the 1894 switchboard. If you remember Mr. Ed, when, when they called in because there was an issue, there was a switchboard, the lady had to punch the numbers in and, and connect the lines hardwired. Um, you know, we've gone from that switchboard mentality or, or technology to this ACD technology to where we could distribute calls wherever we wanted to. And now we're into the 90s and 2000s where the internet comes in and we're able to utilize a multi-channel, omni-channel experience where a call could come in and then to that same platform or chat could come in or something from Facebook. Uh, so we've really revolutionized the technology when it comes to the tel telecom space. Um, and that has helped 
the centers and inbound centers that have you know adopted this new technology the challenge is christian is a lot of your industries your financial health care um industries they're so late to adopt because of the compliance issues that you know they don't understand the benefits or know how it works quite yet which is amazing in 2021 for most centers they say hey we get it we know it we've got to have chat let's figure out how we can omni channel it you know we have customers and and clients who they're still stuck on that that single channel of of inbound support well i think when we talk about change right change is difficult it's yeah. disruptive being able to adopt new things train on new things and also we run our businesses based on what we can measure right and how yeah. do we measure them it helps us understand how do we show whether we're being productive or successful or not at something and when you don't have experience in saying well this is how i would implement web chat or social media or sms or email and or you're able to say, well, this is actually what is a productive use of these additional headcount that I'm adding or right. this cross training I'm doing within the organization for that role to now take on these other medias. How do you sit there and go, this is how you do it and this is how you do it successfully. It takes time, effort, training yes. and making sure that it's implemented properly. So a lot of times I see that sometimes it's I don't know what I don't know. Sometimes it's the status quo. What's well, what we've always done absolutely there's the compliance aspect of it do you see anything else that becomes a driver of where that inbound experience may be lacking just because of something that's keeping you from moving forward yeah you know in the early stages it was it was really on that return on investment because in the beginning it, it wasn't cheap to make the changes and then they didn't we didn't have an omni-channel option everything was bolted on to the side so when we added chat to a major telecom um, program that we had. It was a separate program that you had to log into. Um, and, and you know, you wanted to make sure that that was going to work. And so when we found out that, hey, business is booming and we need an extra 500 agents this month. And we said, well, what if we add chat? Then we can take three to one. You know, these agents can take three chats. Well, they can't take three phone calls at once, <laughs> you know, so it allowed us to easily make that decision because it made financial sense and business sense. And then when you look at the NPS scores and the, the improvements made there, it's a no brainer because, you know, we're in an age where people would rather text or chat than they would pick up the phone and call and talk to somebody. Well, let's talk about that for just a minute. Why do you feel, why have you seen that people feel like using text-based communication like SMS and chat and like that over a phone call? It may sound intuitive, but why did you see on your end the adoption or the necessity for that to be implemented? Oh, well, because, because of this right here. It makes it so much easier if someone wants to come in. You know, they don't want to have to wait on an IVR. You know, they don't want to wait on hold forever where they can just chat and, and continue with their day. They're not focused on just one interaction because that's how the consumers are acting as well. So I think one of the things that we're, we're really nailing on this in particular topic is that sense of meeting the customer where they are. Right. Correct. And where they are isn't just a physical place or a piece of technology. It's where they are is what's convenient in their day to continue to be productive, effective or enjoying their day. Right. So the moment you're on a phone call, some people prefer the phone call. Right. They go, I need to get this done. I need someone to listen to what I have to say. I need to make sure it's clear. It's complex, whatever it is. I, it, I'm, I'm upset. I need to get this resolved. But there's these other moments where they're transactional. Right. It's not necessarily a two-way conversation. I need to just give you information or tell you something while I'm doing other things. And then when it's convenient for me, I can continue back doing stuff. Or, you know, for those of us that like to multitask, we try to do several things at once. And one of those things could be communicating via these other mediums without literally stopping everything we're doing to deal with that call. But now let's talk about that call and why some of us even avoid the call. What do you see as things that are dysfunctional within the inbound side? Let's start with voice because that's still the largest percentage of communication. Yeah. What are you seeing that when you get into the center, you were in the center and you go, man, this is dysfunctional or this is something that would give a poor experience? Yeah, so there's multiple things to look at, right? Um, the first one that's very simple to see is long wait times. So, you know, I remember we ran a healthcare program and it, <laughs> we had, you know, wait times of two to three hours because of the influx of, of what was coming in. And, you know, we were trying to hire 750 people in three weeks because of the volume, you know, so the very disruptive, poor experience. 
Um, another thing that we, we saw in, in one of our accounts was high abandonment rate in the IVR. So going through that IVR, someone gets confused if they're not paying attention to what, what that IVR you know, tree looks like. Um, you know, it can be very disruptive. And when you see, you know, 20, 30 percent abandonment rates in your IVR, those are some things you need to look at because, hey, we've got a challenge. We've got an issue. Right. Um, you know, you can look at all those things. Your, your first call resolution rates, um, you know, is it being resolved? Are they having to call back again? Well, if you had the opportunity to s- send them the text message, hey, is everything all set, everything fixed and check up on them? You, know, you would be able to save that phone call coming back into them. So there's a lot of things that you can look at from an inbound perspective on the health of, of what you're providing. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that we, that we miss a lot of times when we talk about creating these systems is how often do we look at it from the perspective of the right. customer, right? right? You know, we talk about how much effort is it taking for them to actually get to what they want, right? Some of the things may be self-service. Some of them may require an agent. And ultimately, what agent, where and how are they going to resolve or address whatever that person wants and in how much time, right? And when you have people coming in to an IVR, you have them coming into a queue, one of the things is how simple is it for them to get where they need to go? Or are they getting lost, like you said? Or is it not intuitive, right? You have these things where you sit there and go, well, I have nine options. And none of these nine options really sounded like anything I wanted, but there's really not a way to get to an agent easily or bypass the system. And we get it, right? We get why companies do it when we work in the business, but why do businesses do that? Why do you see that companies make it so difficult? Because from a consumer perspective, if I take off my technology and contact center experience hat off and I put my consumer hat off, I sit there and go, why do you make me want to fire you every time I want to talk to you, right? right? Why do you see that happening? Do you ever get the you know behind the scenes look that you can share with the audience? Yeah, one of the things, you know, a lot of your larger companies that are, are moving just from the dollar to the customer experience, um, you know, meaning something to their company where their mission statement actually comes to reality. Um, they're beginning to journey map, as you said, and, and we've had the opportunity to journey map with some of the, the greatest companies out there um, and really walk through what is that customer journey? What are they going through as a customer? Because a lot of, a lot of companies, all they think about is that bottom line, the pat, and, and they're just looking at, okay, I've got this much headcount. How can I get as many calls out that don't need to be in, <laughs> right? And, and in doing so, a lot of times that it, it's the customer that suffers because of that. So when you're going through an IVR, I, was, I remember I was online the, the other week looking for a customer service number. And they said, and I remember looking at Google, it said to get to their customer service line, call the number, press four, press five, press three, press two, wait for three seconds, press four, and then you can get to customer service. Who wants to do that, right? Um, and I know I don't. <laughs> um, so being, you know, so I get on there, zero, 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 right? Zero out. Or, or, or you say representative or agent, but, you know, I'm sure right. what's going to be great for you, right? And it's common that this happens is you memorized that sequence and they change it. Right, exactly. And then now that sequence doesn't work anymore. And, they, and that, <laughs> why? Because people are bypassing the system they've created. Right. But I think the bigger thing is, is if you start to see a material change in the amount of people that are bypassing your system or bypassing its normal use, that's that's probably an indicator that something's wrong versus saying, let's change this up so we can throw them a curveball, right? Right. (laughs) But, uh, you know, when we talk about, you know, internal audits, workflows, you know, things to be able to go back and say, I think we need to make this better. Right. Yep. Either because of complaints or poor scoring uh, or just someone has the foresight to come in and look and say, you know what, this isn't right. This can be better. Do you have examples of what companies do when they do those internal audits or those inbound flows or what it is they're doing um, to be able to make sure those things are up to what they need to be or they need to be improved if they're not? Yeah, there's a few things that, that I highly recommend that seem so simple yet are often overlooked. <clears throat> the first thing you could do is, is pick up the phone and call your 800 number. Get to the top of your VDN, get to the top of the line where they come into that IVR and walk through every stage, every opportunity, 
and wait till you get to that rep. Map it out. I mean, I remember when we did it for one of the, the major financial companies, we had an entire wall, probably 20 feet long, with, with big sticky notes on exactly what that customer journey was, what we liked, what we didn't like, what was painful, what was pleasant. And we mapped it out completely to see exactly what our customers were going through and then took a step back and said, wow, we need to make some changes, right? So that's the first step. Listen to the call in yourself, right? And then the other aspect that I say, sit down with some of your agents or your representatives and why cord listen to the calls that they're taking listen to that customer on, on their interaction and what's happening in their journey do some why cording do some testing do time and motion studies right how long does it take for you to get from from point a to point b to where you're with a rep how many different changes are there and when you begin to map that out and see what's going on you can see the frustration in the rep when they get an upset customer you can see the customer's dissatisfaction because of what they just had to go through and you can put that on a wall and look at how big that looks and and, and you can see how convoluted it is it opens your eyes to begin to make some changes and, and i think that's the first step you've got to open the book to see what's going on yeah, and I think a lot of times when these systems are built, it almost feels like, to use a baseball analogy, that they're using a bat instead of a glove, right? They're trying to figure out how do I get everything that comes to me out of my way versus embracing it, taking it, and actually owning it, right? And 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 that's the challenges I think as a consumer, a lot of people feel that they're they're having to work really hard to actually get to somebody in some businesses. Other businesses do a, a much better job. And they're able to actually make you feel like, hey, yeah, I can I can talk to someone. So when we talk about inbound, you know, we talk about organic traffic, right? We talk about traffic that also um, comes in spurts, right? You know, we can talk about um, you, you know things like um, you know some sort of telethon or some sort of you know right. inbound spikes that happen, um, and then you can have other stuff that's more of you know consistent flow that comes in. When it comes to those types of scenarios where you have just a consistent flow or you have these huge peaks and valleys, how does a company manage through something like that appropriately and understand how to staff accordingly? And obviously from a technology standpoint, manage that accordingly. Do you have any insight into what people do around that? Yeah, you know, there's a saying, no one builds a house without a plan if they want the house to stand. <laughs> and, you know, proper planning and workforce management is so important. Um, you've got to be able to properly forecast your volume. And I've been in some major companies where their forecasting was atrocious, you know, and, and you would think a, a multi-billion dollar company that they would have it locked down. And, and, and it's an art, you know, you have to be able to look at what's happened over the years. You've got to be able to have that partnership with marketing. What are we doing within to drive the phone calls in? Um, or, you know, if, if you're on a, let's, let's take, for instance, uh, if you're selling um, sporting tickets, right? Um, I, I worked for a company where we, we did online sporting ticket sales. We knew every year around baseball playoff time, we better ramp up an extra 400 agents because of what's coming, right? So you've got to be able to think ahead. You can't just think for today. You've got to be able to plan ahead and say, understand, okay, this is the volume we had last year. This is the, the trend upward that we're seeing in sales this year and calls this year. Well, if we put that trend into what we've seen for the previous years in our spikes in our valleys, we've got to be able to project for that. And so it's, you know, and, and this isn't part of the conversation, but Christian, this this very easily gets into creative staffing mentality, right? Um, do you always hire full time? That's not wise when you're in an up and down, you know, um, business. You know, do you have a temp model where you can bring in some temps, train them properly, and then release them at the end without, you know, causing a ruckus, right? So there's a lot of things that you can do there, but that workforce management piece is so important to be able to understand what's going on and how are you going to manage. When you do have that spike, and if it does increase 20, 30 percent, you know, what are you doing from, you know, and, and, and here's how long your, your calls uh, expect the wait time is going to be. Or, you know, adding an option in your IVR. Would you like to have us call you back automatically? Would you like to just look up your order and maybe we, we have an AWS connection that pulls in from the server? If you're just looking for an order status, please press one, push in your order number, and it automatically pulls. You know, 20 years ago, we couldn't do that. Um, so, you know, we, we've got to be able to look 
at our business, we, we always say like in a blue sky, if there were no restrictions whatsoever on what I could do, what would I do? And then let's find out how we can do it. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I think the other part is, is I don't know that we actually look enough at why people are reaching out to us in the first place. Yeah. And when you have those common themes, how do you make that thing better? And that thing may have nothing to do with voice. It could be an improvement of doing something on your website. It could be an improvement in an insert you put in the product that you sell or the service you deliver or being able to at the sales aspect of your product and service that you don't have so many people calling you after the fact going, hey, I don't know where this thing is. Well, maybe if you made a modification somewhere in the manual or the pamphlet or the product, then maybe you don't have 80% of your calls having to do with why you can't find the certain function of the product, right? That's an oversimplification, of course. But the idea here is is if you find a lot of people calling in for X, and then you can find a way to make that truly transactional in a way that someone really doesn't need to talk to somebody, but just getting that information. So that info may be something you can get through web chat or through an email, something you can get through social media, their website, and you avoid them having to consume those resources that you have within the contact center, because of course your headcount is one of the most expensive things for you, right? And you don't want to just throw people at it for the sake of it. Nothing against, uh, you know, not using people, but use them where it makes sense. So you talked about the queue callback, we talked about uh, some other areas where you can start implementing technology. And all of these things, like you said, they affect your average wait time, your first call resolution, your transfer rate. If I get, you know, X amount of calls in, how many of those are always being transferred out they're coming to the wrong place they're getting to the wrong people right and that's where we need to figure that out any other key kpis on inbound that you think are really important that people should start either doing or focusing on and then separate from that anything outside of what we talked about that makes you go you know what these are things that are absolutely impacting these in particular stats that are critical to your business yeah you you know one of the things that you had just mentioned is that first call resolution um we had a major uh, telecom company that, that, you know, first call resolution and transfer rates were major KPIs for them. Um, we don't want a customer calling back in the next 24, 48, 72 hours. Um, and if they did, it was counted against us. Um, and, and, you know, like you said, it's not always technology. Sometimes it's how you coach. It's how you train. It's how you, you teach your people how to relay information, right? Um, and so I think it's very important that not only looking at the technology, but how are you coaching and mentoring your reps to, to truly learn and receive the information and, and making sure that they know how to then relay that ma- uh, information to the customer. Just because they can pass a test in training doesn't mean that they can say that to a customer effectively. Um, I, so I think that's very important that you look at that um, as a company. Um, another thing. You know, when it comes to, you know, your abandonment rate and your shrinkage and, and all of these KPIs that that will drive volume. Um, and, you know, because if a customer is abandoning, uh, a lot of times they're going to call back in. Right. I'm waiting. I'm going to call back in. And so that staffing aspect is, is is important, making sure breaks are aligned. You know, do you have proper workforce management in the background, scheduling breaks and scheduling um, the teams needed if there's highs, peaks and lows in, in the afternoons and you need more people in the mornings and the evenings? What are you doing to, you know, intelligently staff your teams? Um, because that will make a difference in, in your ability to answer calls. And a lot of people, when they start call centers, right, because I mean, we've, we've seen the big players, right? But a lot of your call centers, you've got 40, 50, 100 seats. You know, they're just started up. They say, hey, I bet you I could start a call center. Well, it's very important that you don't just wing it, but you understand what you're doing, how you're doing it, what comes into play. And that's why, you know, these webinars that we do are so important. It gives uh, gives them that insight to how do we improve and, and what do we make sure we're looking at. Yeah, I think the education part's really important. Uh, a lot of times when I see people going to visit uh, events or especially user groups for technology companies and their vendors, one of the common things you get is people talking to other users of products to right. find out what are you doing? How are you creating best practices? How have you leveraged the technology, right? And so we talked a little bit about training, which is important on inbound, because if you have people that uh, aren't properly trained, you run into a lot of issues with 
not only how well you're scored, whether or not you get first call resolution, whether that call needs to be transferred, escalated, so on and so forth. Um, you're also starting to realize that these cost centers, right, can negatively impact your ability to have a really good um, outcome for long term value of that customer, right? right? That lifetime value of that client that buys from you. If they have really poor support experiences or customer service experience or technical support or whatever it may be on the back end, if they have the ability to choose somebody else for that product or service, that may be the avenue in which that happens, right? You know, they could love the product until something goes wrong or service till it goes wrong. And then when they need help, if it's not in the way they want it, yep. it could be the experience that costs them money. So we still look at these businesses in many ways, like that's not revenue generating, but I guarantee you it affects future revenue if you don't take care of your customers on the back end, right? And you give them other ways to interact with you. So we talked about omni-channel and multi-channel with, you know, companies bolting things on and then later on now adopting systems like Noble Business Omni Plus that gives you other medias, right? So you can have interactions in that same system at the same time with the same person through SMS or web chat or email or social media channels like Facebook Messenger, Twitter, WhatsApp, Telegram, stuff like that. But then at the same time, you could start with one media and then convert to another media. So let's talk about that part where you use technology to front end the experience, but then you're also making sure that that transition is done in a way where people aren't repeating themselves all the time, or they're having to constantly tell somebody over and over why they're calling and why they're upset or frustrated. And then the new person goes, I don't have access to that system. I'm sure you've run into that both as a consumer and in running the businesses. What do you think companies can do on inbound to make the technology and the training of the people and the process in play so that people don't have those experiences of having to repeat everything or feel like they have to start all over again? Right. Yeah. And, and Christian, I think it starts with the technology that you implement. Um, I've been I've had the privy to, to work in a few different companies and, and, you know, at a global standpoint, seeing multiple operations for multiple clients and businesses. And, and, you know, I've worked for some billion dollar companies where their scripting for their agents is still a piece of paper tied to the tape to the side of the monitor. Um, you know, it, it's probably time to get out of 1998 um, and to look at what we can do from a technology standpoint. Uh, and, and, you know, that's one of the reasons that I came to Nobel Biz is because of the technology that we're able to provide. And I saw how it can help the contact centers and and so taking that step out of operations and, and into Nobel Biz, it, it was for this reason. Um, you know, to be able to have that scripting right in front of them where they click the button, a workflow engine, right? Where they click the button, it drops them to another script and, and walks through that process to where we can automatically stop a recording because we're gonna take a, 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 a credit card number. You know, we didn't have that ability. We were hoping that the agent would hit the not record button, or we were hoping that the IVR would stop the recording, you know, and now to have the technology to automatically do that and not have to worry about it is amazing. <laughs> um, you know, and then, you know, when you look at, if you build out the technology for your reps in the beginning and you train them properly on how to use that technology, because I've been in so many companies where literally their training, still today, Christian, within the last 10 months, I've seen it still today, their training was a PowerPoint and they read the PowerPoint. They didn't take one call until they got into nesting. They didn't go over any call flow until they were ready to take a call for the customer. That is setting your people up for failure. If, if there's something that you can grasp from this webinar, you need to look at your technology. You need to look at what you're implementing and implement it right. Just Don't just tape a piece of paper to the side of the monitor, but really implement it to where you can optimize what you're trying to accomplish. And then in training, I highly recommend look at turning from just a PowerPoint, let's read this, to situational-based training. Because if you get your reps right from the beginning learning that call flow, even from day one, thank you for calling Nobel Biz. This is Ryan. How can I help you today? Okay, now tomorrow, thank you for calling Nobel Biz. This is Ryan. How can I help you today? Oh, okay, so you're calling in because blah, blah, blah happened. I'm so sorry that happened. I understand that can be frustrating. Let me make sure that I take care of this for you today. If you get them doing that from day one, day two, and they can see it on the screen that that technology has implemented that, they're going to be far better off. Now, another thing that I see, Christian, is 
Um, in a lot of your calls, when, when you call in the customer service line, did you know that you could go to our website? Or did you know that blah, 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 you know? And just trying to divert some of that, that you know, um, self-help that they can do on their own. Um, and, e you know, even now we could do a place where would you like to get a text message so that you can take care of this through chat? You know, trying to mitigate some of those calls coming in, allow them to, to self-assess on what's going on and take care of that account. Yeah, those are all great points. And one of the things I'm just going to give a, a, a quick uh, story of a recent experience I had on Inbound. I won't say any names, but it's in a, a big insurance company. And I call in, takes forever to get to who I need to talk to. And I say, I've called before and no one called me back. And they said they were going to call me back. And I never got a call back. And they go, well, let me look at my notes. And almost nothing that I said on that call is in the notes, right? And when I asked, how come I didn't get a call back? They said, well, you know, we are, we're mostly an inbound center. We don't really make outbound calls. And what that made me believe is that if you couldn't address what I needed on that call, you treat every call as an independent instance, a moment in time. It's not a continuous experience for me. My experience does not happen in a lot of snapshots. It's a continuous experience. And so when I look at that type of experience, it makes me believe that I'm not important enough to be valued and looked at as a person that continues to do business with you. I'm looked at as just a transaction in that moment. And that one agent, I feel bad for them because I wasn't happy about it. <laughs> but here's the reality. They were put in a position for failure up front because they weren't given the tools to see what happened the last time we talked. Where did we leave off? That other agent that was going to call me back. Why would they say they were going to call me back if they had no capacity to call me back or even take ownership of the interaction that we had? Right. And then for me, as the consumer, having to repeat myself only makes me more frustrated, <laughs> makes me more upset. And when I have to call back in, that, again, is a challenge, right? I lose reception on my cell phone because cell phones are pretty much the most common use of calling nowadays with people that don't have landlines. It's most convenient for most people. And what happens? You lose reception. That person doesn't call you back. So now you got to start all over again. So you call back in. And the system doesn't know that you've called in recently right. or try to get you up the queue or find out if your issue was addressed. No, it just puts you in like as if you'd never been there. Yep. And that makes me, again, as a consumer, feel like you just don't care. You're using the bat instead of the glove. So right. when we come back to these scenarios, we talk about Omnichannel. You know, we talk about a system like Noble Business Omni Plus. You sit there and go like, OK, well, if I'm working with you via SMS or web chat, all of that information of our conversation is stored in that conversation. And when I convert to a different channel with the same person, it's still there. And I can say, hey, I'm on web chat. I can convert to a voice call right now with you if I wanted to, right? If it made sense in that scenario. If I'm actually reaching out via web chat and eventually I come back out to you and I call you, I can look that up and I can see that you reached out to me. I can see the whole interaction. So those types of things of my experience, my journey, follows with me instead of it being a lot of moments in time it's my whole experience anything else you can add from a technology perspective process operations training that you can think of that sums up some of the things that companies no matter how big or small they are really have to start focusing on and implementing or looking at and, you know having a good look in the mirror yeah you know the focus like i said earlier is not so much on my dollar because we realize that if our customers our members if it's healthcare a lot of times it's members if our members are pleased with our service they're going to come back and we won't have to worry about the revenue we won't have to worry about the bottom line and so i think it's very important that that companies begin to look at that process and journey and how can we like you said you said it perfectly how can we meet them where they are and you know with nobel biz omni plus being able to see how easy it is when you're on a phone call to quickly send them a text in the same screen, not on a different tab, in the same screen, quickly send them a text that's that's already maybe pre-populated as a click of a button or the click of a button will automatically send them an email 
or we can click on a tab and, and go into our email capabilities, look at the messenger. You know, I, I think it's so important that companies begin to look at that customer journey and how can we reduce friction and meet them where they are. And, and I think it's important to look at, um, don't be scared when you hear omni-channel, you hear SMS and chat and, oh my God, that's going to be so expensive. It's really affordable to see how you're going to be able to reach your clientele um, where they are. Um, when it comes to just an overall, when you're launching, when you're training, when you're trying to optimize operations, always you got to look at the data, right? They say trust data, everybody else trusting God, right? You got to look at the data and then look at the coaching and development that's going in on your centers. I go back to how I traveled nine times out of 10. It was the systems weren't used, being used properly. They weren't optimized from an IVR perspective. Um, you know, they were using multiple um, programs and, and different tabs. And so the wait time was high. And then it always came down to leadership and coaching. You've got to be able to make sure that your leadership knows how to coach and that it's happening. You can't just teach your managers how to coach once and expect that it's being done. You've got to inspect what you expect, that old saying, right? You've got to inspect what you expect, help them along the process. I've always believed in that behavioral coaching, focus on one or two areas, let them improve there, and then move on. Um, and so when, when we talk you know, omni-channel or when we te talk technology, maybe you have a rep that's just spending forever on the call when they could quickly move over, okay, Mr. Smith, I'm going to send you a text message with the link so you can go finish this and, and finish this order, whatever it may be, right? So you want to be able to think outside the box and be able to work with your people, but focus on one or two things at a time and to help them improve. And, and I think if you begin to do that, implement the omni-channel, implement the technology to, to reduce friction, and then truly work with your team on a behavioral coaching methodology, you'll see improvements and turn it around. I've seen so many businesses turn around within the contact center world within 30 to 90 days just from implementing those small things and just being consistent and inspecting what you expect. And, and have, I've seen so many businesses saved that were on the risk of being closed just from those few small things. Well, that's great. And, you know, to kind of close this out, I have a couple of final thoughts to just uh, tap into what you were saying. I think it starts at the top in a company when you have a contact center. If you look at it as a silo or a necessary evil or just a cost center, and it's just this part of your budget that exists, I think you've right. already started in the wrong path. I think you have to start with the outcome in mind and the why. Why would you have it? And that trickles all the way down to why would I even implement SMS? And what's the outcome? If you don't have an outcome that's measurable or something that's specific that you can say, this is why I'm doing it, then I think you already missed the point. It's not just because you can do it. It's not just because someone thinks it's cool or it's the latest, greatest. If you don't have people within the organization that understands why that department, that business, that division or that company exists, assuming you only do outsourcing, um, then you really are missing the mark of all the people's experience that's going to have when they interact with you via whatever channel they're interacting with you. And as you trickle down, you have to have people that really need to look at and go, okay, are we truly looking at just the cost of these calls and the headcount and what it's going to mean for our bottom line from just purely a bat versus glove scenario? Or are you sitting there going, are these people worth money to us past the individual transaction? Is there lifetime value here? Is there people that will promote us to other people? Are there people that will say good things about us versus bad things out in the world? Right. When you look at those things, you look at the training, you look at the products, you look at the specific technologies you're implementing, the process. Then you can start realizing when you have those inbound communications, they're there for a reason. If no one needed to reach out to you, you wouldn't have to have this stuff. But if people are reaching out to you, you have to look in the mirror and say, why is that happening? And how do I make it better? How do I make it so that this department doesn't just get looked at or this division or this unit looked at as this other thing, this afterthought? is how do you really leverage this to make more money? Because in the end, if a business is there to make money, it's, unless you know, you're a nonprofit or some other scenario, um, in the end, it's somewhere it's the money. You have a product or a service, and that part of the business is going to help maintain that. So look at what your call flows look like. Look at the training. Look at the experience of the call recordings, how you staff. Look at how you're routing calls. 
all the transfers. Look at all those KPIs to find out what's impacting them. Sometimes you need to have fresh eyes and you have people that are outside of your bubble look into what you're doing. Because here's the thing. A lot of times we get used to what we do. We're creatures of habit. Sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And so we just do what we know how to measure and what we know how to manage. And until you know how to have a continuous learning cycle or get out of your own bubble or have someone from the outside in look at what you're doing, then you may not have these leaps and bounds of increased productivity and performance. So to close this out, Ryan, I I love that you gave all this insight and this feedback and hopefully everyone sits there and just looks at what they're doing today and say, it's not enough. How do we make it better? And how do we do it through training, through leadership, through coaching, through technology, process. Any other final thoughts you want before we close out? No, you know, I would just say that, you know, that's what we're here for. Um, One of the great things that I love about Nobel Biz is we're not just a sales center. You know, we're truly there to to help our partners through whatever they may be going through. Um, And and I've been a consultant. I've hired consultants. That's expensive. (laughs) So to bring on a team like us to really look inside, take a peek at what's going on, and help them through that process. You know, you may be lost right now. Say, man, I can't get my attrition in line. I can't get my FCR in line. My, my MPS is, is out of hand. You know, we could come in take a look and see how our technology and processes could help you um, get to where you wanna be. And, and, you know, that's what I love about Nobel Biz. It's not just about the dollar. It's about helping our partners. You know, we call ourselves the promise keepers, right? To make sure that we're there for them. So I would just say, you know, if, if If anything that we said kind of sparked interest or said, man, I'm going through that, you know, reach out and let us know um, because we can help you through that process. And, and, you know, we have the tools and and ability to make that happen. Well, I think just like any company, one of the most important things is the people. And I think as long as we surround ourselves with people that have this experience, running contact centers, understanding the different technologies that are involved, the things that do and don't work, it's going to have a much better conversation versus just saying, Here's the product that's going to magically is it's the pixie dust that's going to make your life better. It's not how it works. It's a lot of layered things put together to help things improve. So for everyone who's joined, if inbound's been your business forever, this resonates and you have questions, reach out. If you're in the outbound world or maybe a blended environment, you're looking to do more inbound and you're trying to figure out, hey, how does that improve? How do I get better at it? How do I even adopt that as a business model? Again, talk to experts. Find out ways outside your bubble to help you improve. So thanks for joining today. Looking forward to the next episode and next times we have great conversations, great people. Ryan, thanks so much for joining. Really appreciate your time and insight. Thanks, Christian. Have a good one.